So you have the slide decks, you have the sample code for this, but I'm just going to run you quickly through this slide deck just so you get a little semblance of if I was talking. You will need to pause this video at certain times so you can try the sample code and then you can check the answers afterwards. Please do that, otherwise what's the point of doing the sample code? So this is all about validation techniques. What is validation? Well, validation really is just checking that what they have put in is, is what you want, what you expect. So for example, say you were trying to use a website and you're putting in a date of birth, it might want to check that, that age is in the correct boundaries. Okay, something called a range check. Is it within a certain range? So is it above zero, below 120 or 150 in this example? So what you're really trying to do is you're trying to restrict what's coming in so you get good stuff coming in, so therefore you should have good stuff coming out. Because the acronym normally G-I-G-O is garbage in, garbage out, or rubbish in, garbage out. Now, for example, you might be checking an email address, so all email addresses have an at symbol, for example. Now, also remember what it isn't. It's, it's not, if you're expecting numbers, it will check if you've got numbers, but it won't be able to tell you if it's the correct numbers. So we're asking for a credit card, say, of 16 digits. It might be able to tell you there's 16 digits there. It might be able to tell you they actually are digits, but it won't be able to tell you if they're the right digits. For something like that, you might use something like verification, where they might display what you want again, just to make sure it's correct. For example, typing a password and retyping a password. Validation might be able to tell you what size the password is, if it's the correct length, if it's got the correct characters in, and verification might be able to get you to type the password twice just to see if it is the correct password that you're typing. Now, there's a number of checks that can be done here. For example, you can have, say, a type check. If you're expecting, like, an integer, you could have something like that. Or we might have a range check to see if it's within a certain range. So, for example, an age is not in a negative number. You might have a length check, for example, Telephone numbers are certain sizes. Credit cards are certain lengths. Uh, you might want a password of a certain minimum length or a maximum length. Another type is a format check, just to make sure that if you want uppercase, you've got uppercase, you've got lowercase in certain parts and that kind of uh, idea. So there's a bit of validation you can do in Python. For example, a lot of times you might stick some of these validation techniques in a while loop, so that way then you can check that if you get what you want, then you can jump out of the loop. Otherwise, you can repeat the loop and keep asking and asking and asking until you get what you're happy with and then break out of the loop and carry on with your program. So there's a number of functions that are built into Python. First one is alpha. It's just checking, are they all letters? Is the string all letters? That doesn't include characters. Another one, is the string all numbers? Next one is the combination of both of them. Are they letters and or numbers? Is everything there uppercase? And this one, as you can guess, is everything there lowercase. Now, as you can see there, they return true or false. So you'll normally have to put this in an if statement. So you're saying if this certain string dot full stop is alpha, then that's really saying if the string you're looking at, if they're all letters, it will come back as true. If it's not true, it will come back as false. So if, say, you're checking for something which isn't true, you'd do something where you're checking if it's not what you want. So have a look at this example here. You're going to start down at main here, and it will call then a the subroutine uh, main, which you can see is a procedure because it's not returning anything. A little doc string saying it's running all the functions. First thing it does is it calls a function. You know it's a function because it's storing what comes back in the variable name and assigning that. And it's calling something called get name. So we've got to get name. And get name has a little variable, a little switch variable, a little flag variable, which it sets as true. And it says while that name is invalid, so it's going to keep doing this loop until invalid name becomes false, it's going to ask for a name and store it in the variable name. And then it's just next line, it's checking if the name is alpha. So if it has alphanumeric digits and then it says not so in other words if it was alphanumeric that would be true but if it's not true i.e false it's going to say your name can only contain letters now assuming that that is okay it is all uh, letters or numbers it's then going to do the the next check which is to check the length of the name and make sure it's less than two so if it is less than two well that's going to be too short so it's going to be a problem here and then the final thing is, if it's passed both of these checks, it's going to say, great, that's that's true. And that's where it switches this invalid name to false. And then it needlessly breaks out of the loop. So really, you could have bypassed this one by saying, while true, 
and then breaking out but this is just using a variable here it's a little bit superfluous that break there because if you just kept it at that you'll come round and in the example code and the sample code you do I've changed this code to make it look a little bit better than this so once it's done that it returns the name back to where it was called which was here and then it prints it out with a little format command hello there's your little placeholder and whatever's in zero it will look through the brackets here and pop that in there so if you put a name which is which is acceptable it'll print it out at that point now bear in mind there's always checks on strings they're not checking on the numbers so don't cast them don't convert them first before you do these checks otherwise it's not going to work properly so check if it's digits and then if you're happy that it's digits then do your cast to an int or to a float etc Okay, so what I'd like you to do now at this point is do the sample code 128 validation. So as you can see here, it's very much like the example you just saw. I've just changed it from a while true, sorry, from a, the while invalid to a while true, which is a uh, continuous loop until you break out of it. Same deal, still looking for things, do, still doing a length check, and then if it's happy with everything, it'll then break out and exit the loop and does all that. So we've got a little predict. Like I've just said what you think is going to happen, but have a look look through the code you say yourself. Run it and see if you're happy with it, and then comment anything that you uh, think you may not be able to remember for the future. Just change that code to reject names of more than 10 characters. And then add another check just to see if you can check that it's between 2 and 10 characters. So you're probably messing around with the len functions around up here. Okay, have a go. Pause this video. And then when you're ready... Start the video again and I'll show you the answers. Have a go, don't cheat. Okay, so hopefully you didn't cheat there, had a go at that. Here is the answers. So first thing you want to do was reject names of more than 10 characters. That's where you're popping in this len check here. And also you want to check if it's below the certain characters and a certain thing. So you, remember, the, net, the, the length of your name can't be less than 2 and more than 10, because that's impossible. It can only be less than 2 or more than 10. And there's your little changes there. Okay, so here is another example here where we're going to be using a digits and also the range function. You've seen the range before when we've done a for loop for something in range. So, here we go. So, again, you're starting at main. Main kicks off this main function here, which has a, a call to get mobile number, or get mo mobile no, and it's going to come back with a tell number. So, go up to the here. You're going to have, again, the invalid true. In the example you'll do, again, I've switched this with a while true without using a flag variable. And then you're going to get some input, and then what it does here, which is the important bit here, it's saying, okay, if the length of that telephone number you just put in is it in range 9 to 12? Now, if you remember how range works, it starts from 9 and goes up to, but is exclusive of the second number after the comma. So that between is, is saying is it in range 9 to 11, not 12. And it's also checking to see, is the telephone number a digit? So is it within that range and is it a digit? Now, if it is, great, valid entry, break out of it or switch your flag variable, whichever. And if it's not, don't do any breaking out of it. You just give them an error message that it has to be between 9 and 11, and then and it has to be digits, and then you'll scoot right back up to the while loop, and it will carry on doing it again and again and again until eventually you break out of the loop and you return the tell number, which gets to here. And then you print it out down here. So very similar to what you did before. Right, so it's back over to you again. What I'd like you to do now is do 1210 sample code. So again, have a look at the code have a think about what's going to happen, run it, make sure it happens, comment anything you're not too sure of that you can make notes for in case you want to look at this program at a later date. Then you've got a few things to do here. So first of all, change the range of the numbers being checked. So a little clue, if you don't want to, if you don't want to know what that clue is, just look away now. But if you do, it's the messing around with those. Okay, and the other one is to make, is to try and do that Using that code as a base, create a program that checks for 16-digit credit card number. Don't worry about spaces or anything like that. Just see if it's 16 digits and maybe change all the input messages to the correct way. Maybe the names of the, of the subroutines to something which makes a bit more sense. And then the harder ones, if you want to stretch yourself, is, is once you've done that credit card check, see if you can work out how you could check the first number in a string. 
Okay, and I remember what happens with strings. You can look at parts of strings. Strings have indexes. What index do they? What's indexes start at? And that's your little clue there. So pause this, have a go at it, and in a second I'll come back with the answer. Okay, so hopefully you had a go at that. I've given you the make one, which is the credit card one. I've changed the names, get credit card number, gets a credit card, give yourself a loop, very much similar like I had before, change the name of the variable to CC number, credit card number, ask them to enter credit cards, so change the message on the screen there. Then a little len check here. So we're saying, to see the, the CC number they just typed in? Is it the same as 16? And is it a digit? Now that is good, I'm happy. It's the right, it's the right length, it's the right format, it's a valid entry, I can break myself out of the loop. Now if it's not, that's the else, well, I'll give a little error message, say where they've gone wrong, the number must be 16 digits, and I'm going to pop back up to the, the while true and keep on going. I'll carry on till eventually I get something that I want and return that CC number. Okay, so that was all called in this bit, so not much else changes after that. Now, if you wanted to check to see if it begins with a 4, well, when you do the if length bit and it's the right length and it's a digit in there, you could put, before you say valid entry, you could do another riff to say if cc number square bracket 0 double equals 4, then you do, could do the valid entry and break. Otherwise, you could then print out another error message saying here, the number is 16 digits but must begin with a 4, something like that. If you've got problems with that, just message me and I'll show you the exact answer to that. Okay, here is an example of a menu system. Very common for a controlled assessment uh, that you'd need to do. So what you've got here is you're displaying uh, a menu. You've got a little doc string, a little comment, and then you're using the backslash T. Remember, that's uh, an escape character for a tab. So you tab twice, print out game menu, and then you go to a new line. That's what the backslash N is. Then you print out another two tabs, and you say A, enter name, new line, tab, tab, new line. This is B, play game, new line, tab, tab, secret. So basically, you've got three things coming out here. Then, here's a bit that is useful, you've got valid options. So you only want A, B, and C, so you're stopping them from giving you any rubbish that you don't want. You only want A, B, and C. So say you wanted extra ones, you might add more options here, and add obviously more things to print out at this point. Now, we're doing a while true here, and you're getting a selection, and you're turning it all into uppercase, and you're saying, if the selection, in other words, what they just typed in and you've stored, is it in valid option? Now, valid, valid option is this list list of things a b and c so if it's in that list great done you're happy break out of it and that means you're out of this loop you'll come back with a selection and off you go to whatever you want to do with the selection and probably a whole load of if statements now in this one here imagine it's not though if, it, if you haven't broken out it's just going to say that's not a valid choice goes back up to your while loop ask the input again checks if it's in the valid options and keeps on going till eventually you get what you want break out of it return selection boom done can you try the sample code 1211, which was the menu option one? So it's one where you've got the menu being displayed. So remember, you're going from main, so main will display the menu and come back with selection and then print out the selection. So you're printing out what you want. You've got a list of valid options. You're going through, keep on going until you break out of it. Things you need to do is add more menu options, maybe up here and here and then add more menu choices into valid options, again, in here and here. And once you've done that, try your own menu system using numbers as choices rather than letters. So you're changing a few bits there, okay? Have a go at that, and I'll show you the answers in a little bit. Pause the video. Okay, so here is sample code 1211. Here's the answer to it where we've changed it from letters to numbers. So as you can see, what we do, we display in the menu. So nothing changes down here in the main. And the display menu still shows the number of menu options. By the way, if you wanted to add more, you have said three, quit, and four, add more stuff in here. Add more into the valid options list. Again, if you're stuck with that, send me a message. I can show you how to do that. So what you see I've changed here, I've, I've given valid option one, two, three. Now, I haven't kept those as strings. I've kept them as numbers. There's no reason why I really needed to do that because really you can still check to see if it's a one string or a two string or three string rather than the number one, number two, number three. But just because I like using the right data types, we're going to use it this way. 
Now, because I've done that, though, when you get your input, remember, when you do input, your data type is always a string. So you need to cast that, convert that to an integer. That will then be stored as selection. And just saying, look, is the selection in the valid options? So is that integer that you've just typed in, is it in there? So is it a 1, 2, or 3? If it's not, I'm just going to say that's not a valid choice. Back up to the true and carry on asking for input. But if it is, it's going to say that's a valid choice and break yourself out of the loop. And then you're back to selection, then you print it out. So it's as simple as that. And that leads us to our final slide and the final part of this chapter, which is the big exercise 12.1. What's going on here? Well, what you're trying to do is you're getting a test result and you're checking to see if it's within an accepted range and you're then giving them a grade. So what we've got going on, first of all, we've got a main getting called. So main is driving all this, quite a lot going on main here. But first thing it's doing is after the doc string, is it's calling get score. We know it's a function because it's returning something called test score. So let's look at get score. Here it is here at the top. Ask for test score, inputs the test score and then changes it to an integer and then assigns it to test score and then returns that test score. So here you go here. So you've got an integer now, it's now being returned and then it says these are the new GCSE grade boundaries and checks what that test score was. They don't want you to do that though. It's before you get as far as main, coming back to main in get score, they want you to change in here what's going on. So I'll tell you right now, you don't need to convert the string, the input into test or into an int, not just yet anyway. You're going to have to do a little digits check to make sure it's digits. Then you're going to have to do a little check to see within it's a certain range. Is that test score above a certain number or below a certain number? Or is it above a certain number and below a certain number? You try that out. Then once you've done that, once you've worked out that you definitely have a score within the certain range, then you need to convert it to an integer, then return it, and then the rest will should stay roughly the same. So have a go at that. Pause this video, and I'll give you the answer, and that's the end of chapter 12. Okay, so here is the answer to this, or how I've done it anyway. So main hasn't changed, uh, the call to main hasn't changed, so it's really all in, in happening in get score. So what I've done is added a while true loop to make sure that we keep on going until we get what I want, and then we get an input of a test score. Now you note I haven't converted it to an integer at this point because I want to do an is digit check. And that's what this first test is, is the test score a digit? Now, if it's not a digit, then I don't need to check anything else. I just need to go right down to the else and go, well, that score is not only is not only digits. It needs something else. And then what it does there is it goes back up to the loop and carries on with the input again and asks it. Now, if we do have digits, great. Now what we can do is convert it to an integer so we can do a range check. Remember, int is converting a string into an integer. So what we do then is we say, okay, if the test score is in the range from 0 up to, but not including, 101, so it's checking between 0 and 100, great, you got what you want, break out of it. Now if it's not, if it's out of that range, then we just say the score is not between 0 and 100, and it's going to go fall right back out of the selection statement, and go right back up to the loop again, and carry on asking. And keep on going until you finally get what you want, and it returns that test score, and then off you go. Okay, that takes us to the end of the chapter. So remember what you've done. Validation is checking to make sure you don't get a lot of rubbish coming into your program. You're trying to make sure everything's valid. You're trying to check if it's the right range, the right format, the right length, the right type. There's a number of built-in functions in Python. Remember what validation isn't. It can't tell you if the value is correct. It can only tell you if it's what you're expecting, as in what format, type, etc. Okay, remember you can always practice all this stuff. You can always get in contact with me via email. We'll give you some stuff on the next chapter next week.